using all of the intelligence Mappers. Worse, this is not 
India. This is everywhere. This is global. This is normal. Normal. So now we're at the end of our time together, and it's pretty depressing. Okay. Thank God it is Friday. <laughs> Don't want to hear this kind of stuff anymore. However, <clears throat> normal, normal is not, like normal is not natural. It is not natural. All of that decline is unnatural. When your cortex is taught that your school is left brain, that your notes must always be one color. When you are taught day in, day out to be uncreative, you learn well because you're forced to do it every day and it hits you from every angle. So normally when the brain is taught all the wrong formulae, it declines. However, when the brain is taught by the human language, what actually happens as you get older is that not this up. <coughs> you can improve your creativity immediately as you've actually just done today, haven't you? And you've applied the human language manifested in a mind map. You know the power of God is. So that's where you really are. And that's where the future is. And you can now apply all of that. And the question that is constantly arising is, yeah, but how am I going to apply it? So the simple question you're asking is, how can I apply my brain? <coughs> the reason that it's in your skull is because it's designed to be applied. It's why you use it. So you've now got the mind map. And one of the most common questions around the world, that even from here as well, is <coughs> how can I use a mind map to find solutions to the problems. Could you do that? Could you apply an infinitely thinking machine to find a solution to a problem? Yes. Could you? Yes. Would that be easy or difficult? Easier. It's easier. So this is your good news. The good news is that the normal is normal. That is global. That is in business. That is in schools. That is in governments. And it's simply an error in thinking. It's an experience. It's a risk. You know, we tried this way of education, and it works on some levels, but in creativity, it certainly doesn't. So we adjust it. We apply it. And we are left with this concept of use. How much do we use of what we've got? And in our thinking skills, our memory learning creativity, what percentage of the potential do we use? And we approached that before, didn't we? So what is the percentage that we use normally? 
Can we send it to guess? One point five, one two percent, five percent, the great optimist, fifteen percent. But all the numbers are low. Which again means that your brains know. They know how little they use. Is that good news or bad news? Well, let's look at the truth. The result of the studies showing how much of the potential is being used, and you were all optimistic. You were optimistic. Because this is the number. Less than 1%. Good news or bad news? Good news. Good news. Good news. Good news. How is that good news? Low base effect. So you can see that this team is beginning to think intelligently. Because nearly everybody says it's really bad news. <coughs> it's really good news, isn't it? Because you're still alive. Right? using less than 1% of what you got. And you're still pretty happy. You're still surviving on less than 1%. So what do you now have left to mine for into your gold mine? How much have you got 99. now to explore, to use? More than 99. Yeah, 99 plus plus percent. Is that good news or bad news? Brilliant news. You survived this far on this minimum amount of power. And now you've got millions of times more. And it's available. That's what you are. That is what the future is like. So you are now in the revolutions of the mind time. Because this is where we came from globally. The timeline of the revolutions of the mind. And these are, if you like, the generic divisions of the way we progressed. We started. Stone Age, nomads, and around the planet, that is generally what we humans were. Nomad. Only a hundred thousand years ago. <coughs> Next age, what was that? Yeah, basically the agricultural age where people began to realize that they could stay and grow and didn't have to keep moving all the time. They could stabilize. Agricultural. Started around 10,000 years ago. So pretty close. <coughs> What's the next day? Industrial. Industrial. Hello. The industrial. Really, only a few, a few years ago, a hundred years ago. Digital. So, what age follows? Digital. Very good. Say again, what, what is this next day? Say it. Digital. What do you think? Digital. All of you. Say it. Digital. Okay, so the dominant word in your little voice vote was digital. But the other one is information. That was computer. Right. 
So that's the age, the information, the digital, computer age. <clears throat> very, very, very close. <coughs> so you knew it. Knowledge. And that's where we are. How many of you know that we are now in the digital, the computer, the internet age? Yeah. And it's everywhere. And the governments are organizing it. The businesses are doing it. And cities are becoming smart. And it's all that. That is not where we are. Around the world, people think that's where we are, and we're not. And if we think we are where we think we are, we think in that way. When people were in the agricultural age, for example, they thought agriculturally. When they were in the industrial age, they thought industrially. In the information digital age, that is what everybody thinks like because they are speaking and thinking in digital terms and they move digitally and they explain things digitally and linearly <laughs> computer wise. And that's why schools now are given what? Computers. Digital capacity. The smarter you want to be, the more digital you become. That is not where we are. The brain always works it out. The brain is self-organizing, self-created, self-managing the future. And information didn't work. So there was a new age. What do you think the next age after the information age actually has occurred? Yes. No, the knowledge, the knowledge age. <laughs> knowledge. Because knowledge, <coughs> only a few years ago, knowledge helped gather <coughs> the information, the data. So all the information and data was not integrated, not connected. It was random. So it was fracturing all of the human intelligences. You know, speeding, but speeding into crash, which is what happened. So the knowledge age. And the knowledge age became powerful because knowledge was what? Knowledge is the common expression. Power. Knowledge is power. Power. Knowledge is power. You got the knowledge. You got the power. So people became managers of knowledge. In many companies they became the managers of knowledge. Became all directors of knowledge. How many of you have met or know or are <laughs> managers or directors of knowledge? How many of you managers or directors? Okay. In Singapore, a large number of the directors of the management of knowledge came and they discovered that it didn't work. But being a director of knowledge, it didn't work. And they deeply thought about it. And they discovered that there was something far more important to manage than knowledge. Something more important to manage than 
and the mold on your table. Great discussion. What is it far more important to manage than to manage knowledge in the context of the fact that it is really important to manage knowledge? So what is it that's got to be more important? Great discussion. You can place it. Okay. <laughs>